Wow. This thing's just way lower spinning and lower launching. Right. Significantly lower. Hmm. We officially have zero of those left of center. Today is a driver day. We've got eight high MOI drivers from 2022. Thomas will hit some shots on TrackMan and we'll compare the most popular drivers from this year on TrackMan. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at the Minnetonka location of Second Swing. And we have eight drivers. So it's our ultimate high MOI driver comparison of 2022, Thomas. Eight really, really solid drivers in front of us here. Um, been fitting them throughout the year. Um, and some of these models, like the G425, for example, have been around for a couple years now. So uh, talk to me about these models, what you see, um, what you've noticed in the performance in the fitting bays, and uh, any of the testing you've done as well. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, these aren't your completely low spin driver heads. These are the ones that are a little more forgiving. Mm -hmm. From what I've seen in testing this year, you know, there's been there's been a couple that have got sneakier, a little bit more ball speed. Yeah. Um, and there's been, most of them usually aren't that adjustable. So they're usually pretty fixed with regards to right. the center of gravity. Um, mm -hmm. These these clubs are they're, they're awesome. Like they're yeah. you know these are the staple. These are the ones that most golfers coming in for a fitting right. at second swing will get fit into. Right. This is these are the ones designed for kind of the average golfer. Right. Now there's you know you get the draw bias heads or the low spin heads that you know will fit into kind of a smaller uh, niche of golfers out there. But these are the ones that are designed to kind of fit most players high moi forgiveness easier to launch right and so that's what the the properties here are and we've seen some really good performance out of these the most recent one of these that's been released is the Titleist tsr2 which was here in the fall of 2022 uh, but we even go back to the beginning of 2021 with the g425 max here from ping so everything in between there um, has been you know in the fitting base here at second swing and they've all performed really well uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see what happens here because Moving into 2023 now, I'm sure golfers will, you know, a lot of golfers will look at the price tag of something new next year and think, well, maybe not something brand new is good for me. I'll look at something from the past year or two. They'll be able to come back to this video and see the results. I think that's also where second swing comes in too. Mm -hmm. Like you can, you can find last year's model or the generation before that at a very good value price. Mm -hmm. uh, you may not feel like you need to, to spend your, your money on a brand new driver for the 23-23 yeah. model. Um, so they, you fall back to these models. These are, these right. are going to be the ones that are going to be priced a little bit cheaper, um, but also perform still very, very well. Right. And I mean, we're approaching almost, what, $600 for a new driver nowadays. So uh, it will be a really good option to have these available at a, a much lower rate than that. But uh, to go over again, the eight models we have today. So we have the Mizuno uh, STZ220. We have the Tour Edge Exotics E722. We have the Cobra LTD-X, the TaylorMade Stealth, the Titleist TSR2, the Callaway Rogue ST Max, the Shrixon ZX5, and the Ping G425 Max. Thomas, talk to us about the golf shaft we're using and then how we're gonna kind of uh, format this test here. Yeah, so at Second Swing, we used our all fit system. We've got a cog and a couple of different screws so we can play the exact same shaft in all these club heads. So for testing today, I wanna do something kind of unique. I want my club speed to be right about 100 miles an hour on right. average. Um, give or take maybe a mile an hour, yeah, kind right. of e either way. But the, the goal here is to hit you know, five or six shots with each driver with about 100 mile an hour club speed. Uh, I'm also going to play around a little bit with, with attack angle. Yeah. So a lot of videos you might see where you've seen videos and comparisons where maybe I'm swinging a little faster and my attack angle has got very, very up. So we understand most golfers that come in for a fitting, they probably don't hit up on five or six right. degrees. So I'm gonna try and reduce that a little bit. I'm gonna sure. try and get closer to neutral with the attack angle. Okay. And for that reason, we need more loft. So that's why we're going the 10 and a half degree with all the drivers here. We've got 100 mile an hour club speed. We got five shots with the graphite design, IZ5S golf shaft. Perfect. Um, well, I think that's without, goes without saying now, I think it's time to hit some shots. So you ready to hit some, some bombs here? Let's do it. Hundred on the dot. That's pretty good. There's a good ball. Wow. That uh, almost hit well. Much lower spin here. Right. Even with that one, base open. 
Spin was a little lower. Show off. Wow. This thing's just way lower spinning and lower launching. Right. All right. It's uh, significantly lower. Mmm. That different sound is definitely there. A little lower, it seemed like. A little slower on the spin. Maybe the highest ball today. Yeah, it's a little higher there. Straight, but high. All right, so Thomas, we're halfway done with the testing. Um, I did just want to ask the look, feel, aesthetics, sound of the first four. So it was the Tour Edge E722, the LTDX, and then the Ping G425 Max, and uh, then the Rogue ST Max to kind of round it out. So those four, you got the first two in your hands there. So talk to me about those two in particular. Yeah, so I got Tour Edge and I got the, the Cobra LTDX. Um, what you do notice with the 722E is you got that ridge back kind of mm -hmm. across the top. I think it's a nice alignment aid. Yeah. Helps quite a lot there as well. Um, Cobra just looked pretty clean looking down at. Yeah. Let's say between the two of them, the Tour Edge maybe sounded just a little bit louder. Okay. Um, and then you know, looking with regards to size wise, they look pretty similar in size. Maybe just a little bit further weight pushback with the 722. Okay. Yeah, maybe just slightly more triangular there, potentially. Yep. Um, so now I'll throw in G425 Max and the Rogue ST Max into that mix. Um, where do they fall on that spectrum? Yeah, um, same kind of thing. What I'm kind of noticing with these two is you know, weight pushback a little bit. Yeah. So we're looking down at it. LTX probably looks more a more rounded profile, okay. I guess. Of the four? Of the four. Okay. Yep. Um, you're talking about feel and sound. Definitely notice a difference in sound. Yeah. Um, Rogue ST Max is the quietest okay. by far. It definitely kind of sounded quite a bit quieter off the yeah. bass. Um, while the Ping and the Tor Edge, you know, they yeah. they're, they're loud. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's no, that's that's what we've found in every test with G425 and even going back to previous Ping models. Yep. Um, that's been kind of a staple there. Just a unique um, kind of. Uh, crash sound, if you will, at impact with the driver. So, um, let's just numbers briefly after four drivers. Um, got them up full screen, uh, right around 100 miles an hour, like you said, with the club speed. But we did already see some pretty big differences in spin, and also it's worth noting the launch. There's basically a different, you know, launch angle with every driver so far. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Now these are you know old 10 and a half degree loft settings here, but you can see. Loft changed up a little bit. The one that intrigues me a little bit is LTDX. Mm -hmm. um, the launch angle was lower. Yep. And we did dive in on hit location a little bit. That was also a little higher on the face. Normally yep. you'd expect a higher launch when you're catching higher on the face. Right. So that intrigued me that this launch angle was a little lower and the spin rate was a little bit lower right. as well. Also, your face angle was the farthest open with that club at 2.3 degrees. Right. So you would think We've said it before, like an open face generally increases spin, but the spin was much, much lower with that club uh, compared to the other drivers here. So that's, I mean, I guess we'll see if that stands out as the lowest spinning driver of the test, but it looks yep. like it's in a really good spot to, to be the lowest um, after four drivers tested here. Yeah, and I guess the other takeaway would be Rogue ST Max looking at the ball speed and smash factor, mm -hmm. but looking at the distance. So it's showing some forgiveness there, right? Yeah. You know, the fact that the smash factor was the lowest, the ball speed was the lowest. However, it was keeping up. Actually, it was tied the highest carry distance. Right. And it was about a couple yards shorter yep. than, but you'll notice obviously it had less ball speed. Yeah. Also, so. highest, comfortably the highest launch angle, 14.8, and peak height about, about 100 feet on average, which yep. is really good for, um, for this test, I think that's a re that's a really good showing by Callaway to see that. And again, a lot of these players in this category need a little bit of help with the launch, getting the ball into the air a lot of times. So that can be a big help. And then did just want to see where we're at dispersion wise here. Seen a lot of consistency there. The, the E722 from Tour Edge is the smallest circle up there. I know there was one that was out to the left um, a little bit farther than the others, but right. you're seeing the smallest circle there. Uh, but some pretty good consistency overall from Rogue ST Max and the G425s too. Yeah, and this is all the shots. You know, we may want to play around with maybe 
taking one outlier out per club eventually yeah. when we're done and just see what that looks like. Yeah. Because obviously that, cir that white circle would that get e even smaller. That E722 would get real small, yeah. Yeah. But uh, all right, let's get uh, the last four shots in here, or last four clubs in here and see what uh, the numbers in tell us. Sounded higher pitched. Right. Right as well. Look at that. <laughs> Officially have zero of those left of center. Mm. Mm. Pretty darn good first two shots. One five zero every single time. All right, so Thomas, the final four uh, clubs that you hit. Uh, you got them in front of you here uh, between it was Titleist, Mizuno, TaylorMade, Shrixon. So let's go through those for look, feel, sound, and uh, tell me what you think of those. Yeah, and I'll say three of these four that we just hit, they seem like they're more, the more compact, yeah. high MOI clubs. Mm -hmm. And these, these four drivers, you know, most of them were a little bit more rounded or smaller profiled appearance, specifically ZX5, Stealth and TSR2. Okay. So that's what I kind of noticed looking down at the dress. Um, sound wise, I felt like TaylorMade and actually the three that were I just talked about, they yeah. felt like they were a little bit, I don't know, smoother off a of face or softer yeah. off a of face with regards to sound. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, so interesting because it's, we talked about what well, Tour Edge was kind of maybe one of the bigger ones in terms of the footprint. Obviously, we talked about G425 Max with the sound, yep. but these were, you know, especially TSR2 we noted initially in, in our testing was that it almost looked more like a three or a two and a half right. in terms of the TSR line, right? Um, in terms of past, you know, TS2, TSI2, they really slimmed that one up, made it look a little bit more players like. Yeah, in the past, it just seemed like it was more triangular with more weight back. Yeah. Now it just seemed, like you said, it's two and a half. Yeah, you can even go back right. to the, the D2 models of 917, yep. 915, whatever it might be. Usually a much bigger triangular club head. They've really changed that with TSR2 here. But yeah. so data, a yeah. um, lot of shots up there. We've got five good ones with each driver on the, the data sheet there, Thomas. So walk us through what you see. We've talked a little bit about the first four. Let's wrap into uh, the discussion, these final four here with all eight drivers up there. What jumps out at you? Yeah, so before we, I want to do a couple other things as well. Before we do that, I want to take a look at these numbers briefly like we did at the first. Yeah. Um, so first, taking a look at ZX5, Stealth, STZ, TSR2. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that jumped out at me right back with TSR2 was that smash factor. Yeah. And I think you had mentioned that, that ball speed and that club speed, that's about as close as you're going to get to 150. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 100.0, 149.8, you can't really get much more efficient than that. I mean, that is, because I, I mean, the absolute peak is, would be 150.0 on the ball speed there. Um, so to get one for 9.8, that's very, very efficient. Yep. And then all these, all eight drivers, the attack angle was within, was in, in the two degree range. Yeah. So between 2.0 and 2.7 degrees up. So not as far up as I'm used to swinging. And I mentioned I wanted to dive deeper a little bit eventually into the TrackMan Optimizer just to show yeah. how close these clubs really kind of fit with regards to what's ideal. Right. But let's talk these numbers briefly. There's now we've got eight of them just to kind of compare. Um, so let's look at ball speed, where they all kind of rank here. Interesting, TSR2, LTDX, the highest ball speed. I think I find that funny because we have done videos and comparing the two. Yeah. Because we've you know, had a lot of viewers you know, talking about oh, wanting yeah. to see how Cobra kind of stacks up. Well, those two obviously are a little bit, little bit higher on the, on the ball yep. speed number. Um, yeah, so you can see, I mean, range wise, you were talking 146 to 149.8. Yeah. So it's. Yeah, they're pretty close overall. Yeah, fractional differences, yeah. but it just has a, it does show a little bit into the, I guess, how hot they are off the face a little bit. Yep. You saw some of that and we, that, you know, we noticed it right away, even with TSR2 in our initial testing, just really explosive off that face. Yeah. And so we did kind of interesting and, and 
you know, cool as well to see it show in this test as too. Right, and I find it interesting, you look at that Roll Guest team, actually touched on it before, but you see the smash factor's a little lower, ball speed's a little lower, but then if you come over here, you take a look at the height. Yeah. It was 98 feet in the air. That'd be the highest one, I, I think, think it was right? the highest one. Yeah. So it was keeping up, even though right. off-center, maybe there was a couple of miss-hits there, off-center hits. Yeah. Um, so it was still keeping up with regards to the, the numbers. I mean, Actually, it, it was up carry there. distance, it's carry distance higher is, than almost all of them. I mean, right. there's, it's, you got TSR2 at 248. I think you had one maybe the in the 247, 247 there, but I think yeah. it's higher than everything else. So right. So to that's important that is, to know. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about forgiveness level, Roll ST Max is you know, very, very forgiving mm -hmm. in, in that sense. So, and then the other thing too, just to touch on, I know we mentioned LTDX with the spin. It did stay comfortably the lowest spinning of them in this test. Yep. Um, and then we saw, I believe it was what, the E722 was in the 2500s. That also stayed as the, as highest, the highest spinning. Uh, everything else kind of fell in that 22 to 23 range, it seemed like. Right, yeah. 1882 to 2550. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of them around about, you talked about that range, 2203 to 2397. Yeah. You've got five drivers there that are kind of right around to that that low to yep. mid 2000s yep. range, which, as a club footer, that's always what we're trying right. to, to trying to find. Then, lastly, we can touch on STZ in the sense that you missed, I shouldn't say missed, but a couple of them you missed right, but the other uh, pieces that all of them were right of center, yep. and the spin was still second lowest. Um, right. So that was a kind of a thing with LTDX and STZ now, where you had maybe some misses out to the right, or your maybe your average face angle was kind of a bit open, but mm -hmm. the spin on those ones stayed down. Yeah, every single shot, this is the center line here, was right of center with mm -hmm. ST, um, Z, X. So that, yeah. uh, that's quite interesting. But I mentioned there's two things I wanted to do. So first off, I want to take away the clear outlier per group. Okay. So we're, we've hit, what, 40 drives, and we didn't take any miss hits out. I want to take out the one that's the clear outlier just to see how close they get. Let's do it. And then I want to up dive a little deeper into the TrackMan optimizer just to see how they kind of all kind of fit here. Okay, so we've cleaned it up a little bit. We just grayed out, we took the data away for the worst shot per club. So let's, let's take a look how much closer this gets right now. So we can see, looking at dispersion patterns, you know, standing out to me is TSR2 yeah. uh, stealth. Yeah. Very, very, very straight. Uh, we also can draw the conclusion STZZ, a little bit more fade bias. Yeah. Um, I didn't hit the LTEDX as well. You can see from left to right. Yeah, this is kind of it a was, big space there. You know, big space. There's one mm -hmm. over here on the left, one way right, and then two in the middle. But I find interesting, obviously, the spin still staying pretty low overall. Right. And then uh, the E722 is also pretty tight in there, the, the white one. Yeah. Still going left with everyone on that club. Uh, but still a pretty consistent shot shape there. Yeah, and then looking at best drive, this would probably be the best one right here. That was TSR2. TSR2, interesting. And then you got a couple here from Mizuno that was sneaky pretty good as well. Yeah. But I think the best two were with TSR2. Um, Consistency-wise, direction, the stealth was pretty good overall. Yeah, you also have a pretty narrow oval there for the G425 Max as well. Um, but yeah, let's let's dive into this optimizer here too, because I think that's uh, a tool that's that TrackMan offers. That's pretty neat to dive into. We can kind of see how well these drivers are, or how optimal these drivers would be for kind of the the player at 100 miles an hour. All right. So let's let's do this in direction of you know the best carry distance per club. So TSR2 here. You know when we got this thing set at 10 and a half. Actually, it was 10.75 because it was a 10 degree oh, head. Mm -hmm. It's a unique thing with with Tylus. We can see here, pretty good. And when you're in the blue, you know, you're, you're doing pretty well. Right. So we can see kind of what you would expect out of the TSR2 testing wise. Mm -hmm. Optimal 275, we're kind of slightly outperforming at 277. There you go. So pretty, pretty good. STZ, so we noticed the spin just a little bit lower than what would be kind of optimal for someone that, you know, yeah. is about a two, degree, two and a half degree attack angle there overall. Um, wolf speed also was pretty good. So mm -hmm. very, very good overall. This is where we, we, we noticed the forgiveness level. Yeah. Um, so I, I mentioned Rogue ST Max, I didn't feel like it hit it as well. Well, you can see the ball speed dropped. However, the fact that it obviously got a little more height out of the, out of the miss hits there. Yeah. So launch angle was actually slightly above what was recommended. It was still giving us pretty optimal numbers. So it was right. a little bit shorter, but the forgiveness level is there. I think it also gives you a lot of maybe optimism for when someone will have this in the bag and maybe they, they hit it a little bit more solid than kind of you did here. Um, yep. But they're going to get even better performance. Uh, they could even they could very easily reach those optimal numbers right. on the distance up there. Exactly. Stealth, checks all boxes. 
pretty good right across the board there. Can't really mm -hmm. complain with much overall there. Right. Ping, checks, all boxes there. We'd always spin just a little on the, on the lower side, but it was within, it was very, very close yep. to what's ideal. Um, Srixon, pretty much checks all boxes. E722, I find it interesting, the spin rate is a little, a little higher here, but it checks all boxes and spins actually right in the middle. Yep. And then this is where we notice just a little bit on the lower side. We find with the LTDX, the ball speed is, you know, it's outperforming around yep. maybe what's kind of considered optimal, but the spin rate is a little bit on the lower side yeah. and the height's a little on the lower side. Right. So, right. yeah, interesting that's a, numbers. That's a, that's a good uh, kind of visual to see. And you can definitely then from there, golfers can see what they might be struggling with in their game and use that as a great tool to, um, you know, dial in which driver that might be best for them. For example, a high right. ball hitter that needs to reduce spin or keep it low um, is trying not to hit the ball so high into the wind. Maybe LTDX is kind of the first driver you might start with there. Yeah. Um, vice versa, if you're the player that hits it too low, needs to bring that ball up in the air. We saw the Rogue ST Max was doing that at a high level in this test. Really easy to launch it in the air, highest launch angle, uh, highest peak height. So yeah. uh, just uh, those numbers, I think that visual will help a lot of players. Yeah, excellent, excellent data. We change the carry distance, we notice what, where spin hurts you, right? If you let yeah. too little spin, we lose out on the carry distance. So yeah. the orange circle, we see carry distance down a little bit. But for the most part, those circles up there are pretty close together with regards to carry distance yeah. overall. Yeah. Highest carry, kind of, we also went to the tight list there as well. We got here, we got a ping G425 yeah. max yeah. right up there overall too, but yeah. Good testing for 100 mile hour club speed. Right, yeah, that was really good testing. We got some awesome data up here. We have, uh, well, 40 shots in total up there between eight drivers. Thomas hit some pretty good shots, pretty good swings, repeatable, give us some great data. Also a good look at, you know, more or less, uh, a more of an average player than say someone of your speed that's swinging at almost 115 miles an hour. So a lot of golfers in this kind of range about 100 miles an hour. Really good look at the drivers that might be best for them depending on what they need in their game. So Thomas, thanks for hitting all the shots diving into the data with us, really good stuff. Golfers, if you haven't yet, make sure you do subscribe to the channel, hit that button below, make sure you give this video a like, and you also drop a comment. Tell us which of these drivers in 2022 is your favorite, or maybe it's in your bag. Let us know, and uh, we'll see you next time.